All right, if you have a question, post the word question. All right, Sadie has a question. Jonathan, is it possible to have a great friendship with your partner and still maintain great chemistry? Is it possible to have a great uh, friendship and chemistry? Absolutely, it's possible. Now, it's rare because oftentimes when the relationship gets too focused on friendship that they forget to have the sex piece, right? And, and, and having a sexual relationship is highly important. And many couples start to take it for granted. And oftentimes, they, um, they, once they haven't done it for a week, one week turns into two weeks, two weeks turns into four weeks, four weeks turns into four months. And next thing you know, you could be in a relationship where you haven't had sex together for over four years. And believe me, I know a lot of couples who are in that experience. And let, um, by the way, my coffee mug says, let that shit go, let that shit go. Let's let that shit go. So I think from the sexual perspective, it requires to be intentional, to basically, listen, we've got to at some, I, I suspect at some, and I say suspect because I've, I've been in relationships where we went a long time without being intimate together. All right, well, at least, well let's call that a marriage. <laughs> Um, I, it requires being intentional. And I happen to know a couple who's been married 55 years. They're in their 80s. And to this day, they still plan one day a week of their love day. They have a one day a week, every I think it's most every Saturdays. That's their time, whether it's 8 a.m. to noon or noon to four, is that's their love day where they physically are intimate with one another and they actually schedule it. I mean, it's actually a priority. And some people will think, well, that's not spontaneous. And, you know, we prefer that spontaneity type of sex. Listen, once you get started, you're fucking happy as hell to be fucking each other. So let's 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 maybe it might shift out of the narrative that it has to be unique or special and just say, let's do the act because it feels good. In addition, um, Esther Perel, who wrote the book Mating in Captivity, Mating Captivity, talks about the importance of erotic desire, the importance of erotic desire. And while that's not my area of expertise to flush out what that is for each person, I think it's hugely important that it's you're conscious and aware. Think about this. 50% of divorces in the United States cite money as the primary reason for divorce and this or or the second the one or two reasons one or two i mean these are the top two is money and sex so if we know this going in isn't it fucking naive to think oh just somehow magic fairy dust is going to make our relationship work out folks i'm here to say magic fairy dust doesn't make relationships work it requires being intentional this is one of the reasons why I highly recommend everybody reading the book Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. Why? Because this talks about the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. And ladies, if you follow my work, you know. I always say before the penis goes inside the vagina, buy two copies of this book and say, look, if you want to explore a relationship together, this is my requirement. If you want my vagina, this is my requirement. Ladies. You have every right to be asked for more intentionality because look, I'm your big brother. If I could be there on a first date, when you're out on a first date with a guy, I wish I could be there with the shotgun, point at his face and say, what's your intentions with my little sister? Okay, I wish I could be there for you. I can't, you've got to do it yourself. You have to establish the intentionality. Now I know that goes against every dating rule. In fact, you've got to play stupid games to win men over you. If you've read the book, The Rules, all this stupid games, trickery, manipulation. Yes, it works temporarily. It works temporarily. Manipulations and games work temporarily. But do you want to be in a relationship that's going to implode later? Just because you might have hooked a person right off the bat with some games or manipulation, how is that going to help you from a long-term perspective? This is why I'm a big proponent of asking better questions in the early stage of dating. And I'm talking about asking deeper questions. It's interesting. I've been giving thought to something lately. Um, and I want to share this with you because if you follow my channel, you might have noticed I've done a couple posts centered around when would you like to know that the person you're dating is the wrong person for you? 
Would you like to know before the first date, after the first date, before having sex, you know, or before, you know, or after getting married? When do you want to know this is the wrong person? I think most everybody would say they'd want to know, they'd want to know um, before you ever go out on a first date, okay? Wouldn't you rather know someone is not compatible with you before you ever meet them? So why is there such fear on asking some really tough questions on the telephone before you ever meet someone? I'm here to say the best time to determine compatibility, not, I mean, well, not the best time. Certainly, we have an opportunity where we could ferret out people who are not right for us very early on. And I said in my post, I think nothing helps us determine compatibility better than asking questions about the following. Here, at least in the United States, politics, religion, current events, asking about how their mind works in these three areas, I think plays a huge role in understanding if you're with somebody who has an open mind or a closed mind. I'm going to repeat that. I think it gives you a better understanding if you could be with someone with an open mind or closed mind. This is why I'm a big proponent of asking some really tough questions before you ever meet them in person, because I want you to think of it this way. You go out on the first date and you have a good time because that's what you're told to do is have a good time. Just sit back in your feminine energy and have a good time. And this guy is going to magically claim you and he's going to be chivalrous because you're just sitting back in your feminine. Okay, great. And on the second date, you're sitting back in your feminine and he's leading and he's claiming you and all that. And you're on the third date. And you're just sitting in your feminine, just being all warm and loving and everything else. And then fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth date, you have sex together and you start traveling down the path only to find out that this person you're with is a nightmare. Let me repeat that. This person is a nightmare. Their ideology is different than yours. Their emotional maturity is rather weak. Wouldn't you rather know this before you actually went out on a first date? Because folks, let me just say this. If we're not getting radically honest early, it's much harder to get radically honest later. And here's the thing. You've gone out that first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, ninth, tenth date. You've had sex together and all of a sudden you're attached to this human being. And then you're thinking, well, if we love each other, we can naturally, magically make it work out. So this person's going to have to compromise who they are and you're going to have to compromise who you are because love is just going to magically make it all work out. Folks, I'm here to say that magic fairy dust doesn't fix things. If you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, by the way, that on Instagram, I want you to see that. But for those watching right here, my relationship iceberg, up above is the tip of the iceberg is chemistry. But below the iceberg is shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. Above the waterline is attraction. Below the waterline is compatibility. If you don't check the boxes of shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity, you're never, this waterline is never going to drop below enough to feel deep attraction for that person. In fact, at some point, the relationship will implode. So I'm here to suggest a more radical way of dating, a more radically honest way of dating, and that's by starting with some really tough questions before you ever meet on a first date. Now, a lot of, again, I know the narrative says just have fun, but guess what? Have fun when you realize your ideologies are the same. Have fun when physical, philosophically you're on the same page because the farther two people are apart, the harder it is to come closer together. And this bullshit narrative that opposites attract is a crock of shit. Yes, there's always the exceptions to the rule. There's always that broken clock that's right twice a day. But what about those other 22 hours a day? That's the reality of this. So I went off on a tangent here based on this question. And I hope you recognize that I think the true value is when we go deeper early on, we actually are building the roots of intimacy from the very first date. And if you have physical chemistry, kaboom, way to go. All right, that's just my thoughts uh, there. So thank you so much. All right, so Sadie, thank you so much for your question. Great question. All right. 